Joyce Meyer Ministries dankt haar donateurs die deze uitzending mogelijk maakten. How disciplined are you with your mind and your thoughts? Do you let your mind run rampant? Do you think things that make you wonder sometimes if you're even saved? Well, you know, that happens to all of us, but the minute you catch that thought in your mind, that's when you cast it down. It's one thing to find a thought in your mind and continue to think it and meditate on it. And it's another thing entirely to say, I'm not going to think like that. Get thee behind me, Satan. I rebuke you. And then you think on something else. Think about something good. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high and lofty thing, thoughts that exalts itself against the true knowledge of God. 2 Corinthians 10, 4 and 5. Cast down wrong thoughts. You don't have to just think whatever falls in your head. You can think and meditate on whatever you want to think on. Your mind belongs to you. Don't let it be a trash can for the devil. And every day, and I don't have to be out of bed very long, and I'll catch myself thinking something stupid. I'll catch myself thinking, what's wrong with everybody I know? <laughs> you know why? Because I grew up with a critical father and I've had to fight off a critical spirit. But I will fight it because I'm not going to be that way. I will not be that way because I am destined to be molded into the image of Jesus Christ. I say out loud sometimes, I will fight the good fight of faith. Don't think that you're some odd special case if the enemy attacks your mind. We all go through that. I don't think you ever get so holy that you never have a bad thought. But it's one thing for you to realize it's there and keep thinking it on purpose. That's where the sin comes in. But pray that the Holy Spirit would make you aware the moment a junky thought comes into your mind. Help me, Holy Spirit. Remind me and give me the grace to cast down these wrong thoughts. Spend time meditating on the Word of God. That simply means to roll something over and over and over in your mind and mutter it under your breath until it becomes part of you. Do you meditate on insults and things that people have said that offended you? Well, they said that. When I see them, I'm going to. I'm going to. I remember one time somebody told me that somebody that we did business with through our ministry, and actually they made quite a bit of money from us because of the business we gave them, that this person, somebody that worked for us, had gone to lunch and had overheard this person and actually two people that we did business with talking really bad about us and just cutting us down. Oh, I got so upset. And I laid in bed that night and I made my plan. I am not going to give them our business anymore. I am going to let them know that somebody overheard them talking about me and who do they think they are and I'm going to let them go and I'm not going to this. And the Holy Ghost just said to me, you ain't going to do none of that. <laughs> now listen, he said, you're going to do what you tell everybody else to do. You're going to send them a gift.
And it was kind of a funny process that I went through because once I really realized what God was saying, I actually got, I felt joy. It was like, I, I ain't going to get into this. Hatred, bitterness, resentment, anger, revenge. I don't, I don't have time to waste my time with that. If they want to sit somewhere and poison their spirit by talking bad about me, then that's between them and God. But they're not going to get my joy. So I sent them gift certificates with a note of how much we appreciated the good job they did for us. <laughs> now, I think Satan had a bad day that day. <laughs> Amen? Come on, instead of letting Satan give you a bad day, why don't you give him a bad day? Why don't you decide, God, help me, I'm going to discipline myself. I don't want to complain about anything. Help me, God, to talk good to people, to build people up to Adam. Help me love people. And especially help me love my enemies. Woo! But Joyce, it's so hard. No, 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 no. Remember, we're anointed for hard. If you weren't here when I said that before, you have the anointing, the power, the presence of the Holy Ghost in you and all over you. We are anointed for heart. Sure, it's hard, but you've got what it takes. Proverbs 12, 16 says, a prudent man ignores an insult. <laughs> the Bible says, love always believes the best of every person. How disciplined are you with your appetite? Well, that stirred something up, didn't it? I think I'll just rest a minute and let you think. Really what we need it's not about denying yourself everything, it's just moderation. <clears throat> moderation. You know, as you get older, your metabolism doesn't work as fast, and you have to make adjustments, and if you don't, then you'll start wearing it. <laughs> it's just that simple. I can't eat as much now as I could 15 years ago, and I didn't like it. But I had to make a decision about what I wanted. And one day I looked at myself in the mirror and everything that used to be up here was down there. You might say everything went south. And that was when I knew I needed to do something. And so I started working out and I went on a better eating program and I'm not trying to mess around in your business and tell you what to do. I'm just simply telling you that, matter of fact, I'll just, I'll go to this extreme and I hope I don't offend anybody, but I think if we really love and value ourselves, and we should, because we're God's creation, and He paid a dear price for you to be alive today. I think if you really love and value yourself, then you're going to start investing in yourself and taking care of yourself. But here's the point, you reap what you sow. I don't know how to say it any other way. We're going to reap what we sow. And I'm preaching better than you're acting. The Apostle Paul said, I buffet my body. We don't read it properly. We think he says, I buffet my body. Let's look at it, 1 Corinthians 9, 27. You know, your body is the house of God. He lives in your spirit, your spirit's in your body. If you're no longer here, then God loses another vessel to work through. I think if we love God, we're going to want to be the best that we can possibly be for Him. Amen? 
Let me tell you something. We don't all have to look like one of these 17-year-old models on the cover of a magazine either. I got stuff I don't care for, but I've just decided to hide it well. <laughs> Let me tell you, it takes a while to get this looking like this before I come over here. I mean, I got to color it and paint it and... Phew. <laughs> Stuff it and poke it and hide it and cover it up. It's... <laughs> come on! <laughs> Quit. Quit wishing you look like somebody else and just take what you got and do the best you can with it. I personally think Eve had a little meat on her bones. We'll leave that there. First Corinthians 9, 27. Let's look at it real quick. But like a boxer, I buffet my body. I handle it roughly. I discipline it by hardships and subdue it. That doesn't mean he's abusing himself, but he means he doesn't always take the easy way. For fear that after proclaiming to others the gospel and things pertaining to it, I myself should become unfit, not stand the test, be unapproved and rejected as a counterfeit. So Paul was saying that his body had something to do with his witness to others, that he needed to be in the best condition that he could possibly be in. One of the things that God put in my heart is if you want to be strong for the last third of your journey, then you've got to change some things. How many of you would like me to stick around for about another 25 years and teach you the Word? Well, in order for me to do what I do, and you know, I didn't just start today. This is my sixth event since I got in your town. So you got to have some strength. You got to have some some supernatural energy from God, but you can't just get it all from God. You can't just rebuke the devil. You've got to submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee. Hmm. Do you get enough exercise? Do you strive to keep balance in your life? Let's put up 1 Peter 5, balance, balance, balance. You know what that means? Some of you work too hard and you need a little fun. Some of you have too much fun, you need a little work. <laughs> some of you don't sleep enough, some of you sleep too much. Some spend too much money, some don't spend enough money on yourself. It's all about balance, it's about moderation. Do enough of everything, but don't do too much of anything. This is just good, plain, common sense advice. I heard somebody say the other day, and I love this, common sense is not so common anymore. <laughs> You'd be amazed how far you'll get in life if you've just got good, plain, old, common sense. Be well balanced for your adversary, the devil roams about like a lion roaring in fierce hunger, seeking someone to seize upon and devour. Now, it requires discipline to live a balanced life. You know, one of the ways that I'm able to do what I do now, even though I'm, do you know I'm only two years away from being 70? And you know why I tell that openly? I think it's great that I'm still doing what I'm doing and feel as good as I feel. But it wasn't just because I rebuked the devil. I had to also submit to God. Would you start making an investment now for your future? Don't wait until you've got so much wrong with you that there's no way that you could reverse it. Value yourself. Make an investment in yourself. Don't worry all the time. Don't have such a heavy schedule that you're just burned out from stress all the time. Get some balance in your life. Say yes to what God says to say yes to and no to what God says to say no to. 
Don't spend your whole life trying to keep a bunch of other people happy that don't care one bit whether you're happy or not. Take up for yourself a little bit. Put some boundaries around your life. Don't let other people use and abuse you. Amen? Erect a fence and stay inside the safety zone. Make sure there's always gates in your fence, though, so you can let people in and out. You don't want to isolate yourself. But you know, if you have no fence around your yard and the dog down the street comes and poos in your yard, it's really not the dog's fault. So if you're letting people poo in your yard, the yard of your life, maybe you just need a good fence. Well, some of you got that, some of you didn't, so. <laughs> How disciplined are you with your time? Well, I just don't have any time. Look at me, let me tell you something. You have got just as much time as every other human being on the planet. We all get 24 hours a day. Period. Why is it that some people accomplish so much with their life and other people at the end of every day don't have a clue what they did? <laughs> I'm just so frustrated. I just don't know where time goes. <laughs> Ephesians 5.15 Look carefully then how you walk. Why don't you go home and take an inventory of your life? And if you're all stressed out, get honest with yourself and ask God to show you what you're doing that's bearing no fruit and just cut it out. <laughs> Did you hear me? It's called pruning. When a tree's got branches going in all the wrong directions, it starts to look ugly. So you prune it. Bring it back in shape. Look carefully then how you walk. Live purposefully and worthily and accurately, not as the unwise and the witless, but as wise, sensible, intelligent people. Now watch this. Next verse, please. Making the very most of the time, buying, a, buying up each opportunity because the days are evil. Everybody say, I'm going to start making the most of my time. Let's look at verse 17. Therefore do not be vague and thoughtless and foolish, but understand and firmly grasp what the will of the Lord is. What about your finances? Do you spend too much? Are you hoarding money and possessions out of fear? Do you give regularly? Do you know the state of your flocks? That means do you balance your checkbook? Do you know how much money you actually owe? Do you think ahead when you start to buy something? Do you even ask yourself, can I pay for this? Is it going to pressure me to pay for this? How much am I going to like this thing when I'm still making payments on it a year from now? Are you aware of what bills are coming in in the future? Do you spend money emotionally? Do you shop for entertainment? <laughs> you especially don't want to do that if you can't afford it. You know, I go shopping sometimes just because I want to. Women just like that. But it's a dangerous thing if you can't afford it. Do you shop for comfort or eat for comfort when you're emotionally hurt instead of going to God and getting His comfort? And I could go, oh, I got pages and pages and pages. So right about now you're thinking, my gosh, lady. You want me to go home and clean my house and clean my car and discipline my kids and take care of my hair and take care of my skin, floss my teeth and get an electric toothbrush and, and you want, now you want me to own, not drink soda and just, you know, do this and do that. Now you want me to get up every morning and spend time with God. 
I came here for help. Okay, now I'm about to give you the answer. Are you ready? Let's go to Romans 7. I'm just throwing a bunch of stuff out to get you to wake up and say, am I being obedient to God? Not just the things you find written in the Bible, but the things that God puts in your heart specifically. A lot of little things like we talked about last night. All I'm asking you to do is leave here and be committed to following the promptings of the Holy Spirit. If you get in the middle of a conversation that's gossipy and you get a little nudge from the Holy Ghost, you need to shut your mouth and you need to shut up. Period. If you're getting ready to get into some kind of an intimate relationship with somebody and the Holy Spirit's trying to tell you this is not going to work out good, then you better run. I'm just asking you, instead of directing your own life, if you'll let God be in the driver's seat and begin to lead you by His promptings. Well, I know I shouldn't eat this butt. Well, that, that's God trying to talk to you. You're just saying, I know this is not good, but I'm going to do it anyway. And so I hope I can do the wrong thing and get a right result. Well, I know I should, I know I shouldn't, I know I should, I know I shouldn't talk to people the way I do, I know I shouldn't be so selfish, I know I should spend more time with God. Well, to know what to do and not to do it, the Bible says, it is sin. I don't want any of these things to come across as legalism to you. I'm not asking you, as a matter of fact, I'm asking you not to go home and make this huge, big, plan that's not going to become your new law. It's good to have a plan, but you don't get a plan until after you pray. You don't plan and then pray, you pray and then plan. And I am asking you to go home and say, God, what needs to change in my life? I'm stressed out all the time. Show me what can change. Then work with the Holy Spirit on that one thing until that's taken care of. God, I don't feel good most of the time. Is there anything I can do? Is there something that you want to show me? I'm resisting the devil, but I want to submit to you too. Is there something, maybe you'll just get this nudge, have a regular bedtime. I'm asleep every night between 9 and 9.30, and I get up every morning about 5.30. And my kids make fun of me sometimes. My, my younger son will say, oh, the street lights just come on. You better get home. <laughs> I have what I call chair therapy every night. And honestly, I will, I will be there in the quiet now. And I remember all those years where I had to run around every night and be involved in everything that went on running here, running there, going to this party, trying to keep all these people happy that I didn't even like. <laughs> and I'll sit there now and think, oh my God, I love to rest. <laughs> oh Jesus, I love the quiet. Then I got my little seven pound white Maltese dog on my lap. Oh, <laughs> beautiful, Jesus, you're beautiful. This is wonderful. Then I look out at the trees, oh, praise the Lord. <laughs> and then I can get up the next day and be ready to do the next thing that's on my agenda to do. Can I tell you something? I'm busier than most of you. But I'm happy, I'm peaceful, I'm well-balanced, I'm healthy, and you cannot have it without discipline and self-control. And you're never going to have proper discipline and self-control if you don't say, okay, God, I don't want a bunch of rules and regulations. I just want you to lead me. Well, Satan is determined to destroy you, but you can break his assignment and gain victory in your life 
by disciplining yourself to spend personal, quality, quiet time in the presence of God. And another thing that's really wise is to make a decision to just be good to people everywhere that you go. It's amazing how it just really unnerves the enemy when you put your trust in God, you're obedient to Him, and you just make a decision to go be a blessing to people.